some of your time this evening. Uh, I know the time at home in the evenings is precious, but uh, hopefully you can get some of your credits in for the uh, recertifications after tonight. So, again, my name is Kyle Clampett. I'm with Alliance Consulting Engineers. I'm a civil engineer here in town for a firm called Alliance Consulting Engineers. Um, so my goal tonight is to kind of take you through a little bit about myself, about the company I work for, explain a little bit what a civil engineer is. Um, I know my wife didn't quite understand what a civil engineer was when, uh, when we first met, so hopefully she knows a little more today than she did several years ago. Um, talk about how we apply some of the STEM education in our daily activities and then also talk about the internship program we have um, that might be available to some of the high school students uh, that y'all would be, have interested and then also talk about how we can collaborate together to help y'all are producing our future workforce um, and so we want to talk about some of the things that might be not known as a characteristic of an engineer that's needed and to help educate on that a little bit today. I grew up originally in Indiana, so I'm one of the transplants that's uh, helping the uh, population growth in this area, so I appreciate y'all accepting me here. Um, I've been acclimated after about eight years now. Um, I feel this is home now, and uh, I'm here to stay for sure. Uh, I was a graduate of Purdue University in May of 2001 uh, with a bachelor's in civil engineering, uh, focus on structural, structural engineering. Uh, right now I'm a principal at Alliance Consulting Engineers. Uh, and Married to a teacher, as I mentioned. She's an elementary school teacher over at Lonnie B. Nelson, so she understands and can appreciate that y'all actually were able to have a meal here without a child coming and asking for something and how much you can actually enjoy what you were eating. So, and, uh, so welcome to that. Uh, I have a daughter over at Rocky Creek Elementary over in Lexington, uh, one school district, and uh, my oldest daughter is at Anderson University. Uh, she's in her sophomore year now, so. Thank you to all of y'all, again, uh, not only for your time tonight, but for the amount of time that it takes to educate our youth. Um, we appreciate that. I know it's a lot of hard work seeing someone that's, that I see every day, um, the, the amount of hours you put in outside of work. So thank you for that. Uh, you're not the one getting the big bonuses and the praise and everything around that. So I know it's a truly a, a passion that y'all have. So thank you for that. Now about our company, uh, we're here located, our headquarters is in Columbia, South Carolina. We are in the bb t building, formerly South Trust building, formerly at and t building. Basically, whoever puts their name on the building has been cursed, so we do not ever plan to have our name on the top of that building. Um, hopefully bb t will be around a long time. Um, we started in February 2004, we've been fortunate enough to grow to five uh, regional offices in the area. Uh, we're also located in Bluffton, Charlotte, um, Charleston, and Greenville. So we're spread out throughout the state. We've grown to have uh, 85 employees now um, in that short 12-year term. So we've been very blessed um, to get to the point that we are today. To talk about what, what is a civil engineer, and some of y'all might not know, some of you might know, but a civil engineer really does affect a lot of the things that you experience every day. Um, so some of your students might ask, well, I want to be an engineer. Why, well, why do you want to be an engineer? Well, one of the things we do is the road. The road you travel on to get to work every day, a civil engineer was behind you. Uh, you can see a couple of pictures we have here. On the upper right, you see they look like uh, columns there. Uh, those are piles for a bridge. We're actually building that right now. That picture was taken uh, last week, actually, over on 12th Street Extension. Uh, if you don't know where that's at, that's exit 2 off of 77. The one around November, December that causes all the backups on 77 because of Amazon. Yep. We're making that road a little bit longer. Um, so the reason why we're putting those piles in, you might have seen one if you've headed to Charleston recently near the Jedburgh exit. So that would be between 194 and 199. Mm -hmm. They're putting these columns in the ground. You might wonder, well, why are they doing that? A lot of times when you get into the low country and you have some soft soils, uh, they use piles, and that's what the bridge is going to be supported by. Uh, the soils in that area are very soft because of the high water table in the area. You need to get something very stable to set a bridge on. So that's what those piles are for. So if you're driving down the road and your kids ask what that's about, well, that's the foundation for a bridge to try to get some good solid ground to support that bridge you drive on. A uh, civil engineer would also do some landscape design. Uh, so we're putting the roads in every day, and sometimes those aren't the most attractive things in the world. So we want to put some landscaping associated with those. And also storm drainage. And you can see on the picture on the bottom right, that's a grass line swale. Uh, Dr. Pinckney talked about an untouched area that's down there in the Baruch Institute. And our goal is to try to protect those as much as possible. We know as civil engineers, we're responsible for some of the issues that are happening with the global warming. 
Uh, we've become a lot more responsible over the years. Um, requirements from permitting guidelines have gotten more stringent and more stringent. Um, there were suspended solids referenced um, that Dr. Pinkney is monitoring. That is because of the sediment that happens when that grass isn't there. So if you might see after a big rain in, in October, there was a lot of bridges that washed away. There was a lot of damage done. So civil engineers have become a lot more responsible. Um, some of it through programming requirements are forcing us to be that way. But we also want to be servants of the of the environment as well. Um, so we're trying to protect that through the grassland soils, trying to make less impervious area. And if you hear of a term impervious area, that means water can't penetrate through that. So if you see that parking lot, that used to be nice open forested land that the, the earth would then allow to infiltrate into the soils themselves. Now you pave that over, you basically seal it off. That water has to go somewhere. So that's why we try to do more grass line swales to help absorb some of that water instead of just sending it downstream, uh, which eventually does, as Dr. Pinkney mentioned, mentioned, the October floods do eventually get to the ocean. So what we're doing here affects what's happening on our shores. Some of the other things that we would affect is when you get up and get ready in the morning. You take that shower in the morning and use the restroom. The civil engineer has brought those water lines to your house. They've constructed the wastewater lines to help treat that. Uh, the importance of that, you heard some of that in Brazil as they got ready for the Olympics. Uh, they didn't quite have the wastewater system that we have here um, today. Uh, theirs was a little bit more like it was a few hundred years ago where pipes were just piped right into the rivers and the lakes and the streams. We've come a long way. Uh, at the bottom, you see a wastewater treatment plant that we're constructing down in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Uh, half a million gallons a day is what that capacity is going to be. That's, that seems like a lot of water, um, but what that's doing is helping to treat that wastewater instead of being more responsible that we're collecting that. Those, the wastewater is being treated. It's becoming trying to return it to us drinking water levels before it goes back into the system to get a little bit more responsible. So the civil engineer is responsible for that. The water tank you see as well, the civil engineer designed that. Uh, the reasons for that is everyone likes a shower with some high pressure. Nothing worse than no water pressure in the shower. These water tanks help provide that. So that's why those are there. Um, they're also there for the events of a fire. It's a lot of a water that's stored in the area, but it also helps to regulate the pressure as we go through the hills and the valleys uh, throughout South Carolina. Uh, in addition, we help with the collection of recycling centers. So all the waste we're going to have tonight from these plates we're going to throw away and the food that's left over, an engineer is the one that designed that landfill that it ends up, ends up at. We've designed those collection of recycling centers and I'm sure each of you have used on the weekends and complain about the lines and say, who designed this? Well, that, that was me. So it's my fault that you're taking a long time to get through your lines on Saturdays. Um, but what we do at those centers is, is trying to promote recycling as much as possible, make it as easy as possible we can. I'm fortunate enough to live in Lexington. I have curbside service. I roll it out every Monday night. It magically goes away. Uh, for those people that aren't in those areas, uh, that's what those collection recycling centers are for. Uh, the average daily waste that a person produces is three and a half pounds of trash per day. Um, that's a huge number. Um, the state does have an initiative. Um, the 2020 goal is 40% is recycling. One out of 46 counties in the entire state have met that. That was Lexington last year was the only state to meet that. Uh, we have several counties that are down in 9 and 10 percent range. Um, it's, a, it's something we need to focus on highly. Um, it's something that hopefully the schools are trying to promote as much as possible and teach kids, you know, recycling is a responsibility we all have. Uh, we can pass that on down that trade. It's going to protect our environment. If we don't, we're going to run out of space. Uh, the landfills are so regulated, so tight in this state. Every day we get closer to running out of space. So recycling is the only key that we have to conserving that space. And we've extended the life out of Lexington. That's the one down the lower left corner. That's the Edmund Landfill out on 302 uh, near South Congaree area. Um, you all probably have never been out there, but um, there we go. We got one person that made a trip. Good, good. I'm glad to see that. Um, we've been able to extend the life of that uh, landfill by 10 years um, on a 30 year capacity. And the way we've done that is no more wood debris goes into that anymore. We've pulled that out. Your mattresses used to go in the landfill, those don't go out of there anymore. We pull those out separately. Concrete doesn't go in there anymore. So it's important that when you're using those recycling bins, you are making a difference. So please try to pass that trade along. 
Other things that civil engineers do is environmental engineering. Uh, you can see a picture there of methane monitoring. Uh, landfills do produce methane. That's the breakdown of, uh, of the food as it, as it breaks down does create methane. Um, some of the larger landfills you see over in Lee County, they're actually using that methane to produce um, gas energy. Um, but the Edmond one's not big enough, so you can't do that there. But we monitor that and make sure that we're not polluting the, our downstream hooks from the methane. The lower right corner, uh, that's a picture of the tank. Uh, what we do on a lot of our sites is we do an environmental site assessment. Uh, what that is is we go through a the gas station, and we do the testing to see if that gas station has any leaks. Is there a risk to any of the groundwater in the area? So a civil engineer is responsible for determining if there are contaminants that could risk you know, the groundwater pollution, and then also removal of that. This is a, an underground tank at a residential site that we had. It was just an old propane tank that they had under the ground. Uh, so we observed the removal of that, uh, tested the soils afterwards to make sure they were in good shape before we uh, moved on to the next construction phase. So now that you know everything about a civil engineer, hopefully you appreciate them a little bit more um, for what they what they do. Um, unfortunately, we're a we're a area in a, in a field that only gets known when our doesn't work. When you drive down the roads in South Carolina and you complain about the bumpiness and the potholes, and then we get cursed at. When we, when we just, yes, ma'am. Traffic construction delays. That, we call it progress. Is what we call it. <laughs> so be patient. Be patient with that. But here's some of the projects in the areas that we've been involved in. Uh, Nephron Pharmaceuticals. This is a great facility. Um, if people don't know about it, if any of your kids have had asthma, have to use the nebulizers, um, they make the medicine right there for you. Uh, right here in the Columbia area. Um, this is a great place to go have tours. Um, they have a facility that's They've set up to where long hallways, you can view actually this process being made. You see it get packaged, you can see it get produced, and you can see how it works. Um, they are also, Bill and Lou Kennedy, I don't know if you've heard that name or not, they are huge donors to USC. Um, they are the owners of Nephron Pharmaceuticals, and, and they're very proud of this facility, and I think they would welcome tours of students at any time, so keep that in mind. And yeah, there you go. Yes. They have. They have. Uh, Bovag Americas, uh, they make construction equipment. That's up in uh, Fairfield County uh, in the Winsboro Ridgeway area. Uh, that's another facility. This is the North American headquarters located right there. They make milling equipment for asphalt, so whatever's grinding up the asphalt, the stuff you see over on 26 that's way behind schedule, all that rough uh, area that you drive across, they make the equipment that uh, creates that mess. Uh, Amazon.com, we are also involved in that facility, and Continental Tire, uh, one of the many tire manufacturers we have in the state uh, that are really helping the manufacturing industry and creating lots of jobs in South Carolina. You know, we've been very fortunate to be involved in a lot of these with our company, Alliance Consulting Engineers. We have some more companies that we're involved in with South Carolina, QVC, Adidas, PFG, Monster, Home Depot, um, as well as distribution facilities, some of the others, uh, but BMW, Torre Fiber, GT Tire. Uh, the state has been extremely successful uh, over the last few years in bringing manufacturing into the state. We're not a tourist state anymore. Mm -hmm. We build things in South Carolina. You can, Governor Haley talks about that all the time. Uh, but one thing that we've got to do to keep companies coming in is to develop our workforce. And we thank you all for the work that you do to help develop that. And hopefully I'll talk about um, some of the items uh, later on of what could help be an engineer. Also some of our company culture, some of the things that we do, since we've been so fortunate and blessed as a company, we try to give back as much as possible. Some of it's fun, Carolina Cup, we get to do that every year, that's, that's more for us, I guess, within the <laughs> giving back. Uh, but we do donate and we go to a lot of the uh, conventions around the area, doing 5Ks, trying to create a family atmosphere as much as possible. Um, that's, that's the goal of our company, is not just to build things and pave roads and put water wastewater lines in is truly create a family atmosphere and try to sustain that workforce that we have on a daily basis. Some of the characteristics of an engineer. I still remember why I became an engineer. My teacher, Bill Tatum, came up to me. I was about third grade in church. And he came up to me and I was blessed to always have a mathematical mind. Um, it's something I still try to practice and exercise every day. Um, but it seemed like anyone that was good at math, they're like, go be an engineer. That's what it takes. Be a, you're good at math, go be an engineer. 
there's so much more to that than this day. It, it's not just the kids that are good at math. It is so important. Technical writing, that's something that we are really struggling with and seeing kids that just don't know how to do anything. They text. I'm sure that's part of it. And I don't want to get on a soapbox and I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'd be too embarrassed if I did that. But it's a skill that is so important and so vital. And it's something I ignored when I was a kid. You know, I was just like, I'm going to do math, I'm going to be an engineer, I'm going to do this math problem for the rest of my life. But please try to stress them how important technical writing is. Um, it's becoming more and more as the computer does most of the engineering for you these days. It's all about the delivery of your product and the presentation of your product and the professionalism that you show. And your technical writing skills, if you don't have those, you're not going to go anywhere. And that's with any career you have, that has to be stressed so much. Someone that's good at problem solving, that's really all an engineer is. It's just finding a way to figure out how to make something work. Um, it's not just doing math problems every day. It's not because you, you love physics. It's because you know how to solve the problem. Um, so kids that like to do that, push them to that. Public speaking, um, just like doing tonight, it's not something that engineers are accustomed to doing. Uh, it's something you've got to learn. Um, but it's very important. Um, you're not going to be able to talk to a client if you can't be good at public speaking. Uh, and having just normal etiquette <laughs> with your clients, um, that's something that's so important. <coughs> Mental math is really one of the most important. Um, my daughter gets mad at me all the time that I steal her calculator from her. I say, you're not allowed to use it. It is so important for mental math for kids to know their times tables, even when they get into high school, to really know off the top of their head their mental math. So please stress that to them as much as possible. Um, you know, again, a lot of day, times the computer does so much of the work for us now. Um, you know, we've gotten to the point where you used to, you had a pen and pencil, and you drew your plans. You drew out a roadway. But nowadays, really, you draw a line on there, you build your shape of your roadway, the computer does it all for you which is nice, it, it saves us time. Uh, but the thing that we lose is we lose some of those basic skills of the mental math and of the technical writing again, stressing that so much. <coughs> Conflict resolution, that's something very important in an engineer. I got in a, we'll say a discussion with a contractor just today. <laughs> um, so it's finding out a, a <coughs> conflict resolution and, and that's just kids at the recess playground every day, uh, fighting with each other. Um, and, and finding someone that can get through those and advanced reading skills. I hated to read as a kid. I never did it. But as an engineer these days, I feel what I tell all my young engineers every day, you're part politician, you're part lawyer, and you're part engineer. So without those reading skills, you're not going to read your career regulations. You're not going to be able to understand a contract that you're reading, uh, that you're even preparing yourself. Uh, we have to prepare contracts. So there's a lot of law side of it, there's a lot of political side of it to be able to talk to your clients and communicate with them. <coughs> Wouldn't be an engineering presentation without a fun little math problem. Um, so we do do some basic math. Um, I wanted to show this example here and some of y'all, this is, this is talking about if we're just trying to fill a hole in the ground. Um, you've experienced this if you've put in a mailbox post or dug a fence or done anything where you've had to excavate dirt out of the ground. Why do you always end up with dirt left over? What, what happens with that? Well, the reason for that, and some of the things I talk about here is shrinkage factor and swell factor. Shrinkage factor is compressing that soil. Swell factor is when you excavate it out of the ground, it loosens it up. Um, one example you can look at is just like when you're trying to say, when you're baking in June, a cup of brown sugar. Well, how much are you supposed to press on that? Is it you just loosely compact it there, but the harder you press, there's a more, more room. You can fit more and more in there. That's the shrinkage factor, the harder you compact on that. So why does that occur? You can see on the example here on the, on the uh, image, on the left side is an excavator that's kind of pulling dirt out of dirt in place. We call that bank fill. So that's just dirt that's been out there sitting for years and years. Now, each year, we don't, we don't have as much here, but there's um, freeze and thaw process in the winter time. So that over time loosens the soil and uh, creates voids there. So the soil is not completely compacted um, in its virgin state. But when you excavate it out, it's just like that ice cream bowl you're making. You take that out and it's nice and fluffy and it takes up more space, so you've got to haul more in that truck. Um, and when you put it into the ground and you're building a road, you want that hard and solid. You do not want that road going anywhere, you want it compacted. So that's where that shrinkage factor comes in. <coughs> so the question we have here today is, we're building a trench, it's a foot wide, 500 feet long, 
six feet deep. If you look at the volume of that, you have 3,000 cubic feet. So the simple answer would be if you got 15 yards in your truck, that's 200 truckloads, right? Well, you got to take into account the fact that that soil you're pulling it out of the bank, when you pull it out and you haul it in the truck, it's taking up more space. When you compact it into the ground, you're compressing it with even more force so you can pave that road over the top. So after you take those factors into place, that's 277.8 loads. You know, those kids that complain about algebra, complain about multiplication, I still use it today. You know, I've been at the, not the long, I've only been at it 16 years, but still today, I'm using my simple, basic math skills. So it's so important for them to understand that. It's not the only trait of an engineer, but it's something you use every day. And when you look at that, I mean, if I miss that on my calculations of 78 loads of dirt at $150 a piece, I'm out $10,000. <laughs> My client's not going to be very happy if I come to them and say, sorry, I need another $10,000. That was my bad. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Can I can get the slide from you and put it on the lab bench so they can have? Yes, ma'am. And there's a great YouTube video on these. There's, um, there's a study materials for uh, kids. I call them kids. I shouldn't call them kids anymore. Young engineers, young adults um, that are looking on YouTube, they can find videos of this too, and it even works out the problem for you and takes it through a narrative of, of the, this exact problem and one similar to it. Thank you. Huh? Now I want to get on to our engineering internship program. And I think this is where a lot of y'all will truly pay attention to be interested in. This directly affects you. We've actually had high school interns the last three years. Um, they've been seniors so far. We've had them from Lexington High School. We've had two, and Gilbert High School was the other. <coughs> um, those folks have came to us during their senior year. Um, the school actually sponsors the program, so they get credit for it. Um, they've traveled and work. They work about, I want to say it's about 10, 12 hours a week um, on their schedule, and they work with us, and they work getting them involved. They're doing construction plans. They're going on site visits. They're finding out what an engineer is. I didn't know what it was when I graduated college. Now they have this opportunity before they even leave for college to know, do I really want to be a civil engineer? It's not for everyone, um, but they can find out. Um, we also have student interns. This summer throughout our company, we had 28 student interns from various colleges throughout the state. Uh, we've listed some of the colleges here that we've had people come from. Midlands Tech, we've got them represented. Uh, Clemson University, a cinema for people that like Clemson. Um, Citadel, we've got the Bulldogs there, we've got Georgia Tech, so all those schools, Purdue that I'm most partial to, also represented as well. So these are some of the schools that we've had. We would love to add more and more schools to that. Um, you know, have them come see me. I have my business cards up here. Reach out to me if you do have anyone interested. Um, but this is a great opportunity. You know, the students that benefit the most is the University of South Carolina because we are so close. They can walk to the walk to our office from us and they enjoy coming to our office. We're fortunate to have a nice view up there. We can see the stadium from the uh, office windows. So that's kind of nice. Um, but we have a lot of University of South Carolina folks. Um, we have a lot of full-time Clemson um, students. Most of the time they're just summer interns. But this is a great program to tell, tell your students about. It's a great way to come and find out what an engineer really does before you've really gotten too far in your uh, college career. And uh, that's kind of the last slide I have tonight. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say is just try to figure out how we can collaborate together. Um, some of the stuff I talked about tonight of the skills of an engineer, uh, try to pass that along to them. It's not just for the kids that are good at math. There's a lot of, a lot of ways that you can be. It's the people that want to be out in the field. The civil engineer goes out and goes to the construction site. Make sure it's meeting the sediment requirements so that we're not polluting our rivers and streams. Um, so it's for kids that like to be outdoors. It's for people that like math. It's for people that like to resolve problems. Um, and it's for people that uh, even <coughs> have a dabble in law career uh, with a contract preparation. So with that, I guess I'll open it up for questions if anybody has any.